Hello Street Snappers and welcome to today's video which brings you a different but very effective approach to composition in street photography. But before we start, just a quick heads up that my latest book, 52 Assignments Black and White Photography, has just been published and you can get copies, signed copies directly from me and it's in all the usual places like uh, Amazon, but I'll pop a link in the description below. Right, we're here today to talk about street photography composition. And I think we all occasionally worry that our street photography images can be sometimes a little dull or uninspiring or maybe lacking something we can't quite put, put our finger on. Or maybe they just lack that wow factor. But don't worry, because in this video, I'm going to suggest some rules which are maybe new to you, but which will help really beef up your street images. And it's time for some psychology. Sometimes our street images fail to have the desired impact because our brain finds it difficult to interpret the image. Maybe there could be too much going on in the frame. It's cluttered, or the colours don't work well together, or the subject disappears too easily into the background. One way to get our brains to make sense of an image is by bringing some gestalt theory into our thinking. Bear with me while I give you a little bit of background to help put all this into context, and I'll try to keep it non-technical. And then we'll look at some specific rules and some examples. Gestalt theory, theory was developed by a group of German psychologists in the 1920s to explore the rules of visual perception and how we make sense of what we see. And it's based on the principle that the brain uses self-organizing abilities to form a global whole view of a scene. And very simply, we could summarise Gestalt principles in a phrase that you've probably heard before. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. This is because our mind perceives an image in its whole form rather than its individual parts. We like to consider the bigger picture. It's basically a mechanism to prevent the mind from going into overload and being overwhelmed when looking at an image. So if you're looking at a picture which is confusing or difficult to understand, it's probably lacking some basic Gestalt principles. If we use Gestalt principles when we take a picture, we're well on the road to giving people an easier and more enjoyable and engaging viewing experience, which is what street photography is all about, what photography is all about. It makes an image easy to digest. So Gestalt principles explain how visual perception works and why some images work better than others. What all this means for us as photographers is that if we know how to perceive and to organize things in our viewfinder, we can create a stronger sense of image understanding. So when we're presented with a visually chaotic scene, as we often are on the streets, we can simplify it into one or more recognizable patterns or shapes. This means that we can create more compelling and impact, impactful images, which better engage the viewer. Now, if all this sounds a bit heavy, it actually isn't, and it's quite easy to understand, and it's easy to incorporate into your street shooting. We just need to do a bit of thinking. So let's now explore some of the key Gestalt principles and let's apply them specifically to street photography. The first one is simple, and it's called simplicity. Our brain will always try to reduce an image to its most easily digestible form. The law of simplicity explains that it's important to simplify an image for helping the eye and the brain to feel comfortable in interpreting what we're trying to present. Here's an example. There were actually loads of people around when I took this shot. I knew it needed simplifying, so I followed this guy and waited for the right moment when I could engineer simplicity. And here's another, which is simplicity in itself. So when we're looking at a scene, we should look for its simplest form to make it interesting and easy for the mind to digest. Then after a while, the mind will start to work harder and realise the real meaning of the image. And because we often street, shoot street photography in crowded or cluttered places, this is a great principle we can be adopting a lot of the time. The second 
Gestalt law we're going to look at today is what's known as the figure to ground ratio. And this simply refers to the relationship between the subject, the figure, and the background, the ground, figure to ground. Sometimes we want to draw attention to our main subject and the viewer can't see it clearly enough because the subject blends too easily into the background. It gets lost. So the figure to ground principle helps us explain which element will be perceived as the figure, your main subject, and which element will be perceived as the background. Our mind will generally perceive the smallest or the most contrasty area as the figure and the larger area as the background. Here's an example. The dark subject against the light background provides a good figure to ground ratio. Like this pigeon being shot with a, uh, an arrow from Eros's bow. And this one, and this is a street portrait, so not my usual kind of candid street photography, but it's a good demonstration of how the figure to ground ratio can be achieved by the use of bright color to separate from the background and also the use of focus, a shallow depth of field. And this principle again is effective when we're shooting in busy places like big cities when it's difficult to isolate your subject from all the background noise. So we can create a strong fig figure to ground ratio through the use of focus, by using contrast, uh, differences in colour, perhaps, differences in shape. Let's just pause here for a minute. You're probably thinking, well, street shooting is all about spontaneity, catching a moment, an unguarded moment, and I don't have the time to think about all this sort of stuff. And you'd be right, up to a point. But there are plenty of times when we do have a, the luxury of a, a little time and we can consider a composition thinking about what will work and what won't and how to frame up a shot. And this is where we can bring in a little gestalt thinking. Okay, so back to the principles. And the next one for us is the law of proximity. And we could call this togetherness. And it's where a group of elements that are close to each other are more likely to be perceived as belonging together than if they're far apart. So if we want to consciously create a connection between two or more elements in a frame, we put them close to each other. We put them in close proximity. And this word connection is so important in street photography. And a lot of the witty juxtapositions that we've seen by the likes of Elliot Erwitt, for example, have been made using a strong connection and using the principles of proximity. So let's look at this image, which somehow suggests that the sofa is related to the artists and it's positioned in the frame to make a strong visual connection to bring the two together. Another great rule that street photographers can use is called similarity. We tend to perceive elements as belonging to the same group if they look like each other. We can apply the, the law of similarity using form, color, size, texture, shape, tone, or really any other attribute. But the important point here is that the non-connected elements, which have similar attributes, will be perceived as being in the same group. By using this law, we can more easily make connections between non-connected elements. It makes our life a bit easier if we're all about connections. Repetition, which is a common visual street photography device, falls under this law. You'll see from this picture that we can use this rule to reinforce connections like the shape of the man's cigar, which connects with the shape of the flagpole. Or this one, where the similarities of the coats, the hats, uh, even the shopping bags makes a connection. Now let's look at a, a, a rule that we're probably all familiar with, and that's the principle of symmetry. Symmetrical elements in an image are perceived as being part of the same group. The relationship between the two sides helps us perceive the elements as a single united figure. When we shoot street images, we can use this law to create a perception of a whole image, which actually consists of two or more elements. So when you look at this image, for example, it takes a moment for your brain to compute what's going on, and then it clicks. You're looking at a symmetrical mirror image. And in this shot, 
A suggestion of symmetry brings a strong graphical quality to the image. So always keep your eyes open for opportunities to create symmetry. They sometimes present themselves out of the blue when you least expect them, and you must be on your toes and react quickly. Finally, we'll look at the Gestalt principle of common fate. This is another really useful one for street photography, and it explains that visual elements which are moving together in the same direction will be perceived as part of a united group. So when we see a scene of uh, a group of elements that are all together, moving together, we'll see it as a group. And the other element, which stays on its own, that stays still, or maybe moving in a different way, will be considered to be the outsider. Now, this could be particularly effective if we want to make a strong point with our image or get a message across. So take a look at this image. The hen party women wearing the red wigs uh, attracted the distaste of the elderly Venetian lady here. They were moving one way, she was moving the other. It reinforces what was going on between them. And this one, it's a simple illustration of where we just have people moving in different directions. So these are just some of the relevant Gestalt laws that we can use to spice up our street photography compositions. And hopefully they show you how we can apply a little psychological theory to make a real difference to our images. You wouldn't want to, or you couldn't use them all in a single image, and you wouldn't have the opportunity to use them all, all the time, but it's good to understand them and to have them ready to deploy when the right situation arises. And there are, by the way, more Gestalt laws. So if you want to do a little bit of digging, there's, you'll find loads of resources uh, on the internet that will just take you into an another layer of, of depth and complexity but I've tried to keep it simple. So I'm now off to Venice for seven, eight days of street photography workshops, and I'll aim to make another video as soon as I get back. Now, a few people have been asking about the podcast. Uh, my new street photography podcast, which is called The Streetcast, and I will pop a link below. There's just a trailer up there at the moment. The launch has been delayed by a month or so, but rest assured, it's coming your way soon. And this is a street photography only podcast with interviews, tips, techniques, book and exhibition reviews, and just a very tiny bit of gear talk. So watch this space. As always, thank you for watching. And I look forward to reading your comments and questions below. Bye for now.